Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris Omi. Today we're playing more starters, Order 7. We got a big race coming up towards the end of this video. Uh, but quite a lot of races actually. We've got everybody but Kingsmill, uh, Kingsmere and Daniel to run. Uh, to purchase two euros. Everybody else has something going. So we got our breeding already set up and going strong. So if we do decide to put more in the breeding barn, we can do. It will be a little while before they get there. I think uh, we're coming up to that point, though, where at the end of the season, it makes sense to put maybe some of the female horses in uh but probably not in terms of how long we've got left to breed so we could put some in breed from them bring them back out for next season but at the same time it might just be worthwhile throwing them in and keeping them in so it all depends what we want to do i still got runs i want to make with a lot of these horses so i don't really want to end that just yet so let's keep on racing for the time being and if we feel that at any time we are done with one of our fillies then that will be the time to put them into the barn so heading to woodbine to open things up we got battled out here in a very decent race and rollers there you know a couple other american horses as well but it's a largely domestic field. Canada dominates here. I don't know Big Stone very well. I don't know ZZ Top, although they do look like they're a very decent horse. Uh, Zimho is unknown. And then we come up against Riccadona. So that's the main danger there, I think. Riccadona. Um, possibly in Roller if they have a good run and then the domestics after that really I don't think any of the other Americans are going to step up too much so we will be favoured here quite heavily Rukadona's a little lazy that could be good for us so I think we just gotta see how that goes uh, but I do think they are one of the best horses in this field um the real danger there so they stepped away from their distance they're coming back to it they had a bad result they're a little lazy who knows perhaps that would slightly favor us but then again perhaps not so with that being said let's just run it battle that has run very well at a mile i've been pretty impressed with them so let's see, the Woodbine Mile here, grade one for three-year-olds and above. So right-handed track here because Woodbine, even though I updated all the files and exported everything, it still seems to want to run this way round, and I still believe it's the wrong way round. So I'm not too good about going in and editing like the files themselves because last time I did it, it broke the game something terribly so yeah we just don't seem to be on the right part of the course but final two furlongs then looks like we're gonna have room up the inside which is the far side of the camera we're coming in there quite nicely it seems past easy top into second place past ne neptune equesta rick Adorno, though half a furlong from home seems to have a few lengths in us we're dropping back now into the field a little we just about hold on to second place there. Uh, but Riccadona is the top horse. Ah, oh, that's not the start I was looking for. That was not the start I was looking for. Okay, well, the thing is we've got a couple other races we can run with Battle Dat, but at the same time, again... I'm not sure really winning them does anything. And we're not improving our potential. We're not 
improving our rating we're not getting better as a horse we're not winning big races we're kind of stuck in this limbo of being a very good horse but just not being a top horse see i think battle that goes out to the breeding barn then i think that makes sense to me at least that makes sense i hope that you can sort of see why i might want to do that and then we're gonna go to the next day's racing darunara darunara and uh, marie mysterio two from different parts of the bloodline but the same bloodline from mariana originally so we see how they run Again, we're heading back to Canada to Woodbine for these, I believe, both races are north of the border. And again, we're going to face a nice field here. So, Darren Anna has just won grade one. Pretty good horse, you know. It's won a grade one, grade two, and a grade three, to be fair. It's moved through the order. So is Marie. Both horses today have won all three. And that actually makes it quite rare for our horses because I think the only three-year-old to have done the same is Marej and they're the only two-year-olds. So out of everybody we still got racing, they've hit a grade at every level. Now we've got some interesting horses. We've got the unraced two-year-olds from abroad. You've got the Japanese Country Project, South African Playful Girl and the UAE be in the rows not only that but a quite a, a large contingent of american horses in gold belt whitgift rose have fun franz Foley, pearl mountain and the grade three out like magic and then we got the two domestics from canada itself prestavento and daisy clipper we don't know pretty much any of these horses we will be favorite we will be tipped we're looking well, fit, and ready to race. That's good. Uh, the Dubai horse looks like they're out of it. Gold Belt might be out of it. Playful Girl probably out of it as well there. Uh, may need the race. Same as Daisy Click Clipper. Event looks unfit. So they're not all... Really, they're, they're not ready to race. None of these have been trained to run. So this might be an American race in actuality in terms of finishing order go belt though like say agitated have fun slightly agitated with gift also slightly agitated so half the field is fairly discounted I, I don't think we can look past them really but overall i think that's just not a great field not a great field at all so uh, on to the race and Fingers crossed. I like this horse a lot. It's not our best horse, I don't think, in places. But we've got the outside draw here. We get out of the gates fairly well, it seems. Have fun, a country project towards the front with Presto Vento, uh, Vento and Franz Foley now leading us out. With Gift Rose and Pearl Mountain just in the middle there. And then the large field at the rear. We're going to sit on the outside at the rear, slowly starting to make our way up here. We're going to come inside. We're not going to get... We're going to get blocked off, but not for long. Final furlong. Pearl Mountain down the inside. Franz Foley still leading us out. Darren Anna now starting to make a move up in between those. You've got the beautiful grey out like magic on the near side. Very good run there for a few horses i think france foley ran well i think out like magic lovely little finish uh, as predicted one through seven is is the americans i mean the rest just weren't fit um yeah it's a shame really it's a shame they were all eight lengths back or more on us so yeah i wish the game would actually train the horses to be more competitive for these races 
especially when it's the first run these horses have had. I mean, there's been plenty of time to train them to get ready for the race. So, I'm not exactly sure why they're not ready. But that's not my problem. My problem is my horse and taking care of them. Uh, we did run into a little bit of trouble running in behind one or two horses along the way. We started outside, we went inside, we tried to come back sort of outside a little bit and found our way through the middle in the end. So the jockey trying to slightly go to the outside was a little worrying after coming inside again, but a good run, a solid run, held out against some pacey closer and got up on a pacey starter. And that's just a, a grade one win. That's pretty much all I'm I'm interested in there, really. Rating went up a touch. Did not grow any ability. But that is two now grade one wins for Daranana. And that was a very decent run. That was a very, very decent run. Okay, back to Woodbine again. First Trump, the uh, unraced Dubai horse. Then Duyun and Horsford from Britain and Canada, respectfully. Um, if they're not going to be raced properly again, if they're not going to be ready, then that's fine. Duyun does get tipped. Fit and ready to race, fit. So looking a little out of condition, okay. We're parading a little lady, uh, lazy, so is Charlos. The Lord is badly agitated. Um, top weight, low, uh, sorry, low weight, top rated, form horse, best horse. But we do have fit domestic in horsehood. We do have a fit horse as well from Britain and Dubai and a, a decent American field again one grade three and a bunch of other ungraded some of which are pretty bad it looks like so we'll see really not sure about the uh the field here so one mile summer another grade one for two euros we've got off to a decent start there on the outside. We're going to stay again towards the back of the pack here on the outside. Horsford will lead us out, City Leader and the Lord. And Bardolf Duyun on the outside. Riley Mooch and Quiet Whisper up there. Marino trying to make a move. Got blocked off in the pack there. Did force a way through. And he's going early. He's going really early. Wow, we haven't seen a horse go this early in quite some time. But Marie likes to do this, I guess. It reminds me a bit of Marie W. When she started going early, you knew the races were kind of done. Horsford with a lovely run. Do you... Dropping off slightly. But yeah. I thought maybe... Horsford would put up a bit more fight down the home stretch there, but we uh, we absolutely blew past them. Their jockey knew they weren't going to get up. They held on to second place. And the Dubai horse was injured. So maybe they would have had something. I don't know. Um, but we didn't start as quick. A little bit tardy, it says there. So yeah, we were half a second slow at the gate. And then I felt we did run into traffic as well. But we just seemed to have so much power, so much pace. We could blow through that traffic, get into a lane, and then we were clear. Once we had air to run in, it looked like Marie just put her foot through the turf every single time with authority and just threw it back behind her, launching herself forward. It's a very, very decent run, that. That's a very, very decent run. Um, actually, leapfrogs Darren Anna. 108 for Darren Anna, 107 for Marie coming into these races. They both collect their second grade one win, but Marie moves to 112 and Darren Anna stays at 111 there. So, pretty good though. Pretty good all in. 
It's a lovely little pair of uh, grade one wins there then. So the two milers for the two year olds both come good. And I'm pretty that we're done for the day, right? We're done for the day. So just those two. Yes. Okay. You never know. Um, but yeah, I'm very pleased with that. I mean, Marie Mysterio. You know, you got your maiden, your grade three, your grade two, your grade one, and then your next grade one, moving up to a mile. Looks very good. Hit potential, though it is only 70%. So we would be looking for a jump there. It's a pretty significant jump, really. Uh, 10 to 15% maybe, and, and get up to that 85 range if possible. I think the rest of the stats look really good with a little bit of cruising burst jump. She should be really, really good. But a, a nice pathway through the two-year-old season, matched entirely by Darren Anna. That maiden win, the grade three, the grade two, the seven furlong mile, uh, grade one, then the mile grade one. The very deep. And again, sort of at that 70% potential. We at least know it, as a three-year-old she should now be close to that 80 percent uh hopefully gain a little bit more potential that we can fill throughout that three-year-old season but even as it stands she's good enough uh lower consistency of course so one thing with this bloodline sometimes there's a low consistency which is why i really like the horses that don't have that issue but yeah we get to see Dredge, we get to see safranana all the way back to uh, mariana and then, of course, Mariana leads to Marie W, which paired with Rey Mysterio in this case. And I did I did do a season as well of testing with Rey Mysterio. And none of the horses came back okay. Absolutely zero of them came back okay, I don't think. You know, Marie was the only one who, like, fold anything decent. So, um interesting that that pairing was good and the rest weren't but it's really working for us so two unbeaten two-year-olds with five races apiece with two grade ones a grade two and a grade three i think that's really good for the two-year-olds and they're both fillies they're both running early they're both almost identical in their makeup like marie's a little quicker off the mark with her, her acceleration but has worse starts so you know, maybe that balances out. I really don't see much in them at all. So, yeah, let me know what you think of these two. Um, yeah, I think Marie weighs a little bit more, but she's got a smaller build, which is interesting. Good versus fast track. Bay versus black. Breeding indicator, Marie's already over that. But we know that, realistically, you know, six and nine, that's seven to a mile. That's where we're running with Marie. Although Darren Ara, Darren Ara is more of a, possibly, a longer distance horse. So, that could be really nice. If, if Darren Ara goes to a mile two, into that triple crown race, sort of uh, distance for next season, Marie holds it a mile, it's a lovely one-two punch that we might have there. So I'm happy with that. I think that's a very good pairing to, to get things going here. Um, yeah. Now we, we, we did have to put Battle Dad into the barn. But apart from that, I think it's pretty good. Okay. I don't recognize really any of those dams. Seat is a bit of a legend. Um, if you know, you know. If you don't, there's ways to find out. Uh, and yeah, Mandalay King. I kind of tempted, but again, not really two from eight. Not great. Selling races, selling races. Maiden a third time of asking. Okay. No chance of winning. It looks like a little laid back. Faded there. Not really a big win. Doesn't come from money or high grades. 
I do find it very difficult to sometimes judge these horses. This might be a little bit more... Yeah, hampered and faded. Eight lengths back, though. That's quite, uh, that's quite substantial. Weakened but came up. Maybe that's distance. Stayed on well. Again, could be distance. Dwelt and only back by a length. That could definitely have been a win. So we're seeing... You know, they, they didn't have any distance for the six furlongs. They wanted more distance here. Over the seven furlongs. Almost got up and won that one. Oh, it's not a big win. I wanted like two and a half to three lengths at least here. Doesn't seem to be an issue. Uh, comes from no money, no grades whatsoever yet. No. I, I just don't feel it's worth taking the risk there. I don't see anything at those auctions that makes me want to purchase. On the flip side, we do have Dream Function, which is a horse that I do want to take a risk on. Some decent races, some decent results, top three and a bunch of great ones. So two wins. And there's four, five top three finishes. Okay. We do like King's Chorus, though. We really do. Don't know much about Pandorica. Uh, yeah, okay. Interesting, but nothing really there. And then you see King's Chorus, though, with all the grade one wins. I think, though, oh, we've been burned so many times, but you, you've got to. If you, see, if you see especially a young horse... In an auction with a grade one or multiple grade ones coming from a bloodline that you respect like you've got to at least try you have to so good stamina that's probably like a mile four that's where i think we might be up there um good acceleration great start speed's not too bad especially with distance Okay. Okay. It's not bad. It's it's not where we wanted to be, of course. It's not a full finish. It's not got a ton of cruising burst. It's not got the 80 extra speed, but it does at least have 70. And again, not 80 potential, but it has 70. Low confidence. You know, low enthusiasm. Bit of distance adaptability can probably run. A mile three to a mile six kind of range, possibly. That might be where it's it's best. Might get a mile two, but I doubt it. Uh, all in all, I don't really think that there's enough there to keep. Let's say that. I don't see enough that, that makes me really want to keep, so... Okay, Santa Anita back once more. And here we go. Eye of the Battler. So, one mile, 110 yards. Now, Eye of the Battler, I've got down as a one mile one. But there aren't any graded races at a mile one. So, we're running a little short of that in the American Pharaoh. This is a totally ungraded field. We've got a visor. We've got blinkers on horses. We've got... Two horses being a little wound up, it seems. We don't know these at all. But this is for a grade one. We will be favourites. We will be tipped alongside only Vintage. Okay. They're, they're moving well, lean, ready to go. We're parading well and fit. The only Vintage doesn't have a bad form. We're both the, you know, top-rated horses in this field, although, honestly, it's not that far a spread either. Okay. Again, I think we go in. So, mile and 110 yards, the American Pharaoh, grade one for two-year-olds, on dirt here, 
at Santa Anita. We've got an inside draw there. We're away. It seems to be okay. We will move in towards the front there. Move a tango is in the mix. We're going to just drop back a little bit into the midfield alongside Gio Jamali and Noble Defender with swing kill ammunition. And then only Vintage in the rear. We're just stalking down Mufatango right now. Final three furlongs here on the bend. We're going to start making a move perhaps soon. Final one and a half then on the home straight coming round that final turn. Gio Jamali coming now down with us. But we've got some clear air. We've got the step ahead inside the final furlong. Half a furlong for home, driving to the line, absolutely dominating this field right now. Eye of the Battler will take it. Big, big win. That's kind of what we've been waiting for with Eye of the Battler. A race that we could actually go out and prove what we're about. Four and a half lengths. Don't know if the field's any good or competitive. The rating sometimes tells us so. 98 up to 102. So probably not best of fields that we ran against and we don't even gain potential yeah okay that sucks that really sucks a fifth run and we're still not above 60 percent i was really hoping that would jump us towards the 70 um Yeah, that's really disappointing. That's really disappointing. Oh, boy. Um, now, if they do gain, let's say, up to 80 potential as a three-year-old, and then, you know, we win our races, we gain that 20 that we're expected, you know, at the top end, then, you know, if we, uh, we are expected to gain that. We didn't this year. But the right race is early on. We could definitely do that. We could still hit that 80 potential. So it's not the end of the world. But I really dislike seeing a horse not even be able to hit 70 as a two-year-old. I can't lie. It does worry me. It really does. Not much to do about it. But yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting. we got Parks. we got Marej running in the Pennsylvania Derby. And then Santa Anita again. Da Cuckoo in the awesome again. One and a half a furlong. And Rodeo Drive, one mile two for British Sweet. I feel fairly comfortable with these races here. I feel comfortable with these horses. I think that we've got some consistent three-year-olds we've got a couple that maybe need a good run or two and that cuckoo is in that mix but i still believe they can do it so we'll be in there with uh oh interesting mizu canova is back in this one radio morelli and bali kraken with the grade twos and then there's some big big names bigger than i thought would be in here to be honest with you you've got Son of Vic and Engraving. You got Spensley. Then you got Back Bob Back. Very interesting to see them in this. And you see Larissa as well. Okay, very competitive. And to the end of the earth. 129 rated. This is going to be. A crazy race. The end of the earth should be up near the front. Hopefully we will. Son of Vic's in great form. Back ball back will start well. And Larissa will be in the mix somewhere. That's if a grade two doesn't step up. Who knows? Bellamaker won it last year. Uh, we're looking well and fit. Yeah, to the end of the earth. Son of Vic. Back ball back. I mean... What do we have here? A ton of extra speed. So that might come in handy. But 
yeah, this is a tougher field. Okay. Again, I think we just have to run the race. Just have to run the race. So the awesome again, grade one for three rows on dirt. One mile, 110 yards. We've got an inside draw there. Almost against the rail. We'll get away well. And move up into that midfield before dropping back. Back, Bob Back was on our inside. They know a second behind to the end of the earth. Red Shoe and Spensley in the mix. Son of Vic just ahead here of the pack. And we've got the inside draw. We need to make sure to the end of the earth doesn't go on their own. We're making some tremendous work there from the inside to the outside. Round that turn. No down fighting for the final furlong marker. This is the final furlong. We've got about a length and a half over to the end of the earth. Back ball back hasn't dropped off yet. Perhaps there's something left in the tank. we got Red Shoe up in there. That's a very decent run by Dakuku. I love that move. I love that move we made. Unconventional, but we had it in the locker, and I will take that. Larissa run really poorly. Uh, back ball back held on a lot better than I thought they would, but to the end of the earth was always going to be our main challenger there. But that's a very, that's a very good run. Um, that cuckoo comes up again. I think they like to run a mile, but we just ran an extra half a furlong. We weren't hard pressed. We were in pretty good company. Let's put it that way. Pretty good company. I really respect to the end of the earth. I really do. Um, yeah, we just beat a 129 rating. So that 118 goes up to a 123. It's not the biggest jump in the world. But now we get another horse that's won at every graded level. And Dakuku finally gets that grade one. Moving up to that mile marker. Maybe even a touch beyond. Can we fill out the potential? No, we don't move. We stick on that 75, I think. Pretty much our potentials at this stage of the season are done. I think where we are is where we're going to be. Yeah. But that's a very good run. I'm very impressed. That 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 was a little worrying looking at that field. But yeah, we, we got the job done. We got the job done. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant run. And another grade one. I think that leaves down like that. The only three-year-old grade one. British lady needs to run. I think she can win as a two-year-old and get a grade one. And then it's Kingsmere and Danell, the two purchase ones, and Cormodat as well. So if we can get Cormodat one, and we can get British lady one, and down like that one, I'll be very happy with what we've been able to produce. Out to the barn, onto the track, and getting grade ones. I'd be very happy. We're back here, though, though. Straight away, basically, British Sweet is up. Abraham's decent. Abia's decent. They're the two great ones. Little Sister Sitch, Sparksept, Deabag, and him, Demo. We don't know that well. Although we do know that they're not great horses. We see them a couple of times. We don't know them that well. Harrison, Lady, Floppy, Panea. Don't know them. Grade three. Oh, excuse me there. I had to cough. Um, so, yeah, well, the youngest horse, we're going to take a weight advantage for that. So, low weight, top rated, in form, best horse. There are some dangers in here. There are, there really are. Aberavon and Abia, like, I, I can't ignore them at all. Um, but yeah, we're looking okay. We're looking okay. Let's see what, how we line up then. And if we can get a good start out of the gates. The one mile, two furlong, Rodeo Drive. Grade one for three roads and above on turf. We're in the center. We get out of the gates fairly well there, I feel. Amongst the best of the starters. And we're going to sit back now in the midfield with Abravan and Sparksept up in front. Deerberg on our outside, a beer on our inside. So the purple silk in the front and then... On our inside against the rail, 
Those are the two other great ones, Abravan and Abia. We're now going to make our move up ready for this turn. Looks like Deerbag right there with us, Harriston Lady. And then the rest at the rear, not ready to make a move. Him the more may be making a move. We're inside two furlongs. Rounding now the crest of this turn. Heading for home, down the home stretch. Fighting for that final furlong marker. Abraham by about half a length over us. We've got Spark Sept still holding on to third from a beer. Now starting to move up the field and past the beer. Catching Abraham maybe, but driving for the line. Hand in the air. We get the big win. Abraham comes second, but five and a half lengths back. Spark set with a really, really good run. Impressed by them. And a beer sets in. So my top three actually came in one, two, and four. But there's something about Spark Sept that, yeah, I think they're a lot better than I thought they were. Uh, the rest of the field pretty much as expected. That weight advantage kind of played into our hands. I don't expect like too much of a change, but we do actually gain eight points. We jumped to a 138. Three grade one wins. We jump to a 138. We don't hit any more potential. Again, I think we're where we're at for that. I didn't think the field was good enough. I didn't think the race was prestigious enough. I didn't think that their ratings were high enough to bump us up. But we just jumped. I guess that was an impressive win against a good field. And we just jumped eight rating points. Which means British Sweet now can realistically hit that 140 as a three-year-old. Just like Saffron Fang. And possibly like Maresh. And I didn't expect that at three. I really didn't. That's solid. Like, that is really solid. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Talking of Maresh. A good run here could put us in contention. Now, there's no older horses. The field is decidedly lower rated. So, I don't know. Slightly higher prestige race, I think. The Pennsylvania Derby, a little bit more prize money. Um, yeah, everyone's on weight, whether by far the top rated, by far the best horse, in my opinion, and by far the form horse. Oranges in Europe. Always felt like they could win a grade one, but we haven't seen it yet. Simon Side and Ustnova up there again, grade one horses. We don't really know the rest of the field very well. We are parading well, lean and ready to go. I will take that. We are the only tipped horse. We are the favourite by a decent distance. And I think we should be. I think that's something that we've earned with our runs to date. Four grade one wins. One grade two, one grade three. Um, not great pace. Not great pace. I will say that. But a ton of extra speed. Not a full finish bar. So an interesting mix for Mirage. But um, again... We've got a run. And if we can get those points, if we can get a good run, a good victory here, move up to a 140, that would be beautiful. One mile, one furlong, Pennsylvania Derby, grade one, three-year-olds on dirt. It's not the greatest start in the world. Merez here near the outside. Uh, not the best at all. Carlton House, a dangerous horse, I think, in second place there, behind Gentle Irony. Ustanov on the inside, we've got Mitara, Simon Side, Oscar Trial, Successful Appeal, and Oranger. The grey at the rear in the orange silks. Maybe blocked off, maybe not able to get up here. And we seem to have had a little bit more trouble than they did. It's the final furlong. Oranger starting to come through. Marej, though, driving in now for home. you got Maitaro with a decent run up into third, but just about a length. I don't think that was the best run. Yeah. 
yeah, see, see, almost everything went wrong in that one. Slowly away, ran in snatches, not much room to over two lengths out. Or two furlongs out. So I'd say we're about a length back on the start. Another length for running in snatches. And not much room's about another length or two lengths. So we're, we could have possibly won that by up to five lengths, is what I'm saying. If we'd actually have run well. But Orange was held up as well, so maybe four lengths. I don't know. Um, it's a win. It's a grade one for Marej there, moving her all the way up to five grade one wins. We had 80 ability, 90 potential, so there's room to grow. I don't think we will have. And that 135, I don't think jumps after that race. But we can cross our fingers on both those points. Yeah, we stick on 135. And we stick on potential. Yeah, I think if we'd have run the race I know we can run, I do think Marej could have jumped up to 138 or above. But it's still a very good run. Still a very good run. A hat-trick of wins for the three-year-olds, following up a hat-trick of grade one wins for our two-year-olds. Like, that's impressive. That's impressive. Okay. Battle that didn't run well the first time and went to the breeding barn. That was our first race. But that was a decision that... I had to make. I just had to make. Pretty sweet. Looks like they can still run, so they stay out. We still got a chance at that 140. Come Angel, depending how well she runs, she might head to the breeding barn as well. Um, so those three-year-old fillies were always in that category of maybe being moved into the barn. So, yeah, it, it just depends what I think they can do long-term as well. But up next, Comedat, one of the few that doesn't have a good run in them. It looks like, please, please, why? Four weeks. Okay, so British Pearl is <sighs> out of the Jean-Luc Lagardère. And that sucks because I really... Really wanted to see what they would do. I really thought they had a, a very good chance of winning that, but okay. New market, Judmont Middle Park here. Let's see what we can do there. It's going to be a, an interesting trip abroad again. New market is a fun course, but it's. You know, not a trip that sometimes we enjoy. It does look like a largely American field. Few grade twos. Nobody that really sticks out to me. Two domestics. Really not sure. We are moving well. Very fit. Prime to go. I like that. I do like that. One of the domestics seems out of it. One of the Americans looks lazy. Merchant of Medici and ourselves. Those are the horses to worry about. The top rated and the best horse. So, pretty good all in all. We're not really favourites. I don't know why we're not favourites. Or any second favourites. Or third favourites. There we go. Uh, so, uh, over time, the betting comes in and we will get backed all the way to favourites. That's okay then. I, I was worried if that was something that, you know, we're indicated just something i'd overlooked luckily not so let's dive in then um yeah I, I don't know the field i don't think we've raced at new market before i'm not sure because normally we don't run the two-year-olds this late in the season so i don't think we actually have ever raced this. I think a couple of the three rows might have raced at Newmarket, perhaps. I don't know. We're up in the front anyway with Quiza, Drodries, Jamaica Grande. Looks like we're just like going for it from the off here. The final two furlongs. Merchant of Medici's coming, storming through, 
Antonio Caesar as well. What a finish by Antonius. Oh, Medici gets up as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I thought the I thought that we were gonna be challenged by the British horses and they dropped off severely after a good start. Um looked like we went out from the off and tried to win it from the line, which a little unusual, you know, from the gate to the line. You're not usually gonna see a horse just you know, take the front and win it, start to finish, but I thought we had some good pace, and then when Merchant Medici came up, I was worried. But they did seem to stall a little bit, and I thought, okay, perhaps now it's a fight for the line that we've got here, and of course, Komodat couldn't quite get that going. And then Antonio sees it out of almost nowhere, just driving through. Great final pace there from them. And we're stuck on a grade three for Comadat. So I definitely feel that we've got to go back to five furlongs. We have to probably go back to five furlongs there. I just don't... I don't know. I mean, we're close. We've got a third and a fourth in a six and seven furlong. So, I don't know. We are gaining in terms of rating. I mean, that's something. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. I didn't think we felt comfortable at five. I misbooked and jumped all the way up to seven. I thought dropping back to six might help us. But I'm wondering if five is still where we need to run. Both our wins have come. The maiden and the grade three. The second place in a grade two early in the career. They're all at five. I probably should have just held the horse at five and ran it. I know Kamait loves to run those short races. So I should have held back. So maybe that's an oversight by me there. Come Angel. I mean, we got another one here. I mean, six furlongs heading to Japan to Nakayama, I believe. And this is the Sprinters. Um, Again, very interesting. We got Katie Stuter, a fellow grade one three-year-old. Uh, we've got some four-year-olds as well. Jana's okay. M.I. Babe is scary, and Holly Hayes runs really well, usually. I'm scared of those two. I am scared of those two. Then we got our ungraded domestics in Lost World and Pick a Nice Name, and Nelly done that with a grade one. Like, those top three names, Nelly done that, Holly Hayes, M.I. Babe, if they're not near the front, I will be surprised. Nelly might not have as much pace. Perhaps they're coming sort of downhill past their peak. But Holly Hayes and M.I. Babe should be right up on this. We will be up there, though. Us and Katie's tutor. Katie's tutor will be a little lazy. We're moving well and fit. Looks like most of the field in about the same kind of stage as us. Holly Hayes slightly agitated. Lost World maybe a touch. Relax, so is Jana. But yeah, I think I think the bad thing's right. Those top four are the top four. Those top four are the top four. Um, I'm a bit worried about Nelly done that, rolling back the years, but apparently not. I mean, the form-wise, it doesn't look likely. So, okay, if the domestics don't come through, I think we've got a really good shot here of at least being top three and having a good run at this. And Kamenjil... 
Yeah, she's decent. Nowhere near the finished product. Maybe goes to the breeding barn. We'll see. So let's get things going with her. Jump right into the race. Is it frozen? No. Okay. Ooh, for a second, I had the uh, little twirl going, but uh, yeah. Six furlong sprinters, grade one, three-year-olds, and above on turf. A right-handed course here at Nakayama, Japan. Switch the camera. And we're out of the gates looking like we're okay. We're going to move towards the front. Holly Hayes in the green, currently in fourth. Sandwiched between another Hallworthy and Lost World a little bit there. Katie Stuter, dangerous, up into third. Once upon a time, just on our outside. And my babe is towards the rear here on the outside with the white sleeves and the dark silks moving up now. It looks like... We're going to get pushed out the third again. And sadly, it's the horses that I don't know have come through and made an impact there. Another hole where the Lost World, I knew a domestic might come through. Another hole where they have never seen. Don't know at all, but just, um, yeah, just stepped up, got the job done. We don't look like a run-up. At no point there did I think we were going to win. And again, you now the, the pace of the race might have been too much. But um, I don't know. It was difficult to tell. I couldn't slow the race down. I was pressing the button. It was doing nothing. Tab was doing absolutely nothing. So I don't know what to think there. I don't know what to think about come angel looks like come that might be down there four weeks jeez what was pearls pale gums anemia okay so we've got a, we've got anemia then we got a virus i was wondering if they were both virus and if that would hurt us um Yeah, I don't think it's... I don't think Comangel's ever going to be a great racer. We've got two grade one wins. We've got a top three in Japan. You now, a couple of grade twos almost, you know, almost were landed, but they just slipped past us. It's a pretty good racing career, actually, for what I thought. Uh, plenty of room to grow, but we're never really going to fill it. So I think Comangel in the breeding barn to me at least, makes the more sense right now. And we'll be able to breed as a three-year-old and just get that going. I think that just is the uh, the way of things for me. End of the day, I always thought she produced well in the barn. Now she gets her chance. So she dies off down there. Two more race days to come. Sadly, only two races in each. We should have had three in each, but I had to pull one before the video on the third here at Keeneland. And we had three lined up as well for a couple of days' time that we've picked up an injury and are not able to run. So, first up today, cross your fingers, British lady has got a grade one. Just like Darren Ann and Marie Mysterio, I, the battler, British Pearl, we've been waiting for them to get distance so they can win these races. They're finally getting them. British Lady now has her run. Couldn't win the grade three at seven. We're moving up probably once a mile one. We're again just short of that 110 yards over a mile. Um, top rated will be for non-stop. Everybody looks in decent form, but these are two-year-olds. They've not had the best of competition. They've not had top-quality races. This is their first real test. For non-stops, one a grade three. But that's about it. Everyone's on weight. Everybody's really together. For non-stop will be the overwhelming favorite here, it seems. They're moving well. We are parading well. Mamonta's sweating badly. So they might be the one out of it, which is okay by me. 
Um, I'd expect us to rise slightly in the betting, but we don't. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we're going to jump in then. We're going to jump in. No time to dilly-dally. British lady at the Breeders' Futurity here at Keeneland. One mile, 110 yards. Grade one for two-year-olds on dirt. And there we go. A decent start there. Number three gate, and we're out fairly well. Momonta goes to the front. We've got City Leader back to Pepito Colonges and the Lord. And the four at the rear, Dunro Boy, Miss Ranova, Cossack Prince. And on the outside, um, I like Cossack Prince there, actually. Uh, where is for non-stop? They seem to be right at the back there. Here they come. Here they come. One and a half from home, then. We're driving down the final stretch here. Got a few lengths at the final furlong. Pepito Colonges with a lovely run, but for non-stop. This is why they were favourite. They're chewing up the turf. Do they have what it takes? Point two, point one. They don't have that final run in them. I was really, really worried. A length for British Lady, then. For non-stop's a decent horse. For non-stop is a decent horse. But British Lady is yet another grade one winning two-year-old. Up to 108 rated. Don't mind that at all. Sempty. We stay Sempty. So no gain in ability. But a good run. Again, I thought that um, we went early enough to not make it a factor. We got out ahead enough so that we we were never caught. I didn't think Pepito would catch us. I thought they were they were back far enough. Um, but they were running well. They were running well. And for non-stop, I was for most of the race, I was really worried about where they were running. And when I saw them way at the back, I thought, okay, if we can go early enough, if we can just snatch a couple of lengths, that might prove enough. And we got up enough so that when they did come through, and they came through really well. We just held on. A length there to win. British Lady. 100% will take that. Very, very nice run. And now Aztec Shine again. Best form, best horse. Not top rated. That goes to Jack Day. Um, Some good grade twos in here. And Roller and Lock Bar are dangerous horses as well. Grade one winners. We will be the youngest horse. That will give us a weight advantage. Yeah, we'll be favourite. We'll be almost unanimously tipped. We're looking well and fit. Lockbar and Coastal Passage slightly agitated. Rostow and Armory House a little lazy. Jack Day's parading well. They'll be in blinkers. And in rollers moving well and fit. So that might be my top three. Us, Jack Day and in roller. Uh, with Lockbar being a factor at some point. Either at the end or at the front. I can't remember if they go out early or not. The Shadwell Turf Mile or one mile race, grade one. And we're off and running well. The Aztec Shine. This is for three year olds and above. We are the only three year old. We do go to the front with uh, Nakshaban and Rasto, Coastal Passage just in behind. Then Lockbar, the Purple Silks, inside to Jack Day, outside there, the red and grey of Enroller. Armory House at the rear. We look to want to run this from the front and just go for it. Two furlongs from home. We make our move down to one and a half now. Aztec Shine running well. Nobody else in place. Enroller will be coming. We can see them moving up the order. The final furlong. Here comes Enroller. Here comes Jack Day. The top three as predicted. Do we have enough to hold on? This is going to be a tough one to hold on to. Enroller comes steaming through. We just stay up on Jack Day. Ah. We knew who the danger was going to come from. We knew that Enroller was coming late. I didn't know what Jack Day was going to do. And we just couldn't hold on. We just didn't seem to have enough pace there. We just didn't have enough pace. I wonder if we'd be better slightly at seven furlongs. I don't know, but we've run really well at a mile as well. So 
I don't know. I think we can run well. That was so... So close. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know. We've got good pace on the horse. We've got good extra speed. It's not a full finish. I think that really did hurt us in that final furlong. We couldn't really answer once Enroller got past us. I don't think we could answer there at all. That's slightly disappointing. And okay, then. It's a one-two punch. At France, Longchamp. We head to Paris. To the Hippodrome at Longchamp. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Okay, we got we got two races. First up is, is Saffron Fang in the Arc de Triomphe. And then we got a cheeky little five full on grade one. We're down like that twice to get a grade one. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The Abbey, basically, and the Arc de Triomphe. I mean, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. What a way to end off the videos, though. Back-to-back -back races at Longchamp. And we don't we don't head to Paris very often. We don't head to France very often. But um, we do today. 140 rating will be the highest in the field. Unsurprisingly, we are unbeaten since our debut in that grade three. We almost won. Ten races won in a row. Eight in a row grade one levels between a mile one and our race distance today of a mile four, including the Triple Crow, the Kentucky Derby, the Breakness, the Belmont Sticks. We've headed to Japan and won at a mile three. We've headed to Ireland and won a mile two. Now we head back to Europe. We head to France. Mile four. I love this horse, but it is a question mark for this race. This is a question mark. This is huge. This is huge. Monaghan is a decent runner. I know that. Uh, the Paddy Man is a very dangerous runner. Ukrainian runs well. You got Sin Time, who, you know, did really well. We shouldn't really be surprised to see them because they ran well at the Belmont. Um,. Hopefully we have a better trip than them. Whispering Blues, again, I don't know too well, but could be good. And then a couple of grade twos, just one for the Royal Nomadic Warrior. So I think we should be favorite. I think we should be right up there. If Sin Time's the best in this field and the Paddy Man as well, uh, I think we can beat them both. We will be tipped. We will be favorites. We're coping well, lean and ready to go. Sin Time's very fit and primed. I don't like that. Uh, Paddy Man sweating up a little bit. I really like that. I really do like that. Oh, my. Cross your fingers. Cross everything you've got. We've got a, a double header of craziness coming up here. Let me collect my thoughts, and we'll get this started. Whew. Getting a little too excited before the race is run. We've just got to dive in. We've just got to dive in. I think if this comes down to us in sin time, I'll be very, very happy. I think there's some dangerous horses here, though. The one mile four, Qatar Pre de l'Arc de Triomphe, class one grade one, three roads and above on the turf B track at Longchamp, just outside Paris, France. It's a good field. It's not a big field. And it's not a great start, but the dark horse in the field here coming out strong after that. Sin time now creeping into the front with Nomadic Warrior and the domestic Monaghan in the inside there against the rail. We got Whispering Blues and Just for the Road leading us, and then the Paddy Man in Ukrainian, two very dangerous horses at the rear of this field. 
We're running on turf. We're running right-handed. We're running on foreign soil. We're running right-handed again. It didn't matter in Japan over a mile three. The extra furlong here in the big prestigious race. Saffron Fang now making their move up into contention. Two and a half from home. The final two furlongs pushing past the Manic Warrior and Whispering Blues out ahead of Sin Time, who's starting to drop off now. One and a half furlong. I expect these horses to come back at us, but I expect Saffron Fang as well to kick on. It's the final furlong. It's us and Sin Time up near the front. This is what I wanted to see because I think Saffron Fang has it. We're going to push out over Sin Time and come through quite nicely. Sin Time with a brilliant run. And what a win, the Arc de Triomphe there. Saffron Fang gets the mile four, gets the run. Nice trip. Bad start. Bad start, but stayed out of danger. I think we, we didn't get out of the gate very well, but that allowed us to pick where we wanted to race a little bit. We moved to the outside, and we just stuck to our guns. Um... I'm happy with that. I'm very, very happy. That 5 million prize money there. 3 million goes to the winner. That is Saffron Fang. We did dwell. We still won by two lengths. I knew when we were coming down to the end, us and Sin Time, I knew that we had pace. Uh, and I knew we could beat them. We did exactly the same in the Belmont. And I feel sorry for Sin Time. I really, really do... Because if you look at things, like they didn't run a good derby, that's fair. But they could have won the Belmont. And they could have won the Arc de Triomphe. It's a very nice filly out of a horse marvellous value that I totally respect. I really want to add Sin Time to our breeding barn. I really, really do. I think she'd be absolutely amazing in there. Um... But yeah, you know, great, great sort of, uh, great race again. But we didn't start well. We could have done even better. And Sin Time back to the Ukrainian is four and three quarter lengths. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. I will take that. Um, very good run. Very big win. That's one of the biggest we're going to race all season. And we came through in absolute style. Absolute style. One mile four. Not a problem. That means we can run again. In Japan at a mile four at the end of the season. We got the Breeders' Cup as well. I think we got the Tennis Show. The Breeders' Cup Classic. And I can't remember which the mile four in Japan is at the end of the year. Um, but I do believe there is one. So. Interesting. Very interesting. And that means... We should hopefully see a lot more from Saffron Fang going forward. And now we've got the Qatar Prix de l'Abbe. Five furlong class one, grade one, turf. Open for all contenders. Dumb like that's not going to be too bad off in terms of rating. We're kind of, you know, a little bit domed on the leaders. But, you know, we're kind of up on the low rated. So... I don't think we're out of our depth in that regard. It's very interesting, though, to see a two-year-old run this. Lejeunie's going to take a shot at it, and it could be the biggest win of their career. That could be just crazy. I think that skews the weights somewhat. So I'm not going to worry about my 9.13. I think if they weren't there, that's possibly like a 9.6 or something, 9.7 perhaps. Um, but we still got weight over other horses in this race. We've got the British, Sky's the Limit, Kitty Kitty Can Can, decent. we got, you know, the Canadians come in with Kahoo Princess as a grade one. Joe's a grade one, and Barley's got to be your favourite here. An absolutely phenomenal horse in phenomenal form. Uh, top rated as well. If Barley doesn't win, I'll be a little surprised. Sky's the Limit could be a factor as well. Shinko Moon's a grade 3. Tectonic as well. We're a grade 2. I don't know. Uh, front 3 for me is probably Bali, Sky's the Limit, and then ourselves. I don't have full confidence in us because we, we haven't run well. But there we go. Bali, Sky's the Limit. 
Uh, we are coping well, lean ready to go. I don't mind that. Bali's looking okay. Sky's the limit's looking okay. Yeah. Um, no point in delaying. Let's get into it. I think there's, like I say, two dangerous horses. And a bunch of unknown horses. There could be sort of a, a lurking danger we don't yet know about in the field, of course. Every horse could be dangerous. This is a pretty prestigious race. We're on the outside. We get off to a decent start. We do get off to a decent start. I will take that to begin with. We're going to move to the outside here. We're going to stay amongst the stalkers. This front group of five. We've got Joe in the lead. Shinko Moon on the outside here with us. Ballet against the rail. The sky's the limit in the blue silks now up in first. It's the final furlong. The sky's the limit's driving away. Ballet's going. Shinko Moon, I didn't think would run that well. Joe's falling off. My front two are my other front two you're seeing. Sky's limit to Bali. We do take the third place I thought we were probably most likely to take. Um, a good run. A very good run. I expected Bali to probably win that race. But I knew if not, the Sky's the limit was possibly the only other horse that I had confidence in taking this. Um, but I asked for third. I thought third we could get. We did get. That's a decent run. It's not a grade one. But it's the best grade run we've won. And it's by far the toughest grade one we've run. And we've only been beaten by really good horses. So there's still a chance for down like that. There really is. But... Um, yeah, I'm wondering if we should move perhaps up to six furlongs with them. That might be something I want to do. I'm having trouble between five and six furlongs picking races, but not bad from, you know, down like that at all. That third place, we, you know, we don't improve really. Did we gain ability? I don't think we would have. No, we didn't. Okay, so we're pretty much locked on in terms of ability. The ratings are climbing. We've got a 138 and a 135. Saffron Fang, of course, holds on to that 140. Definitely the quality horse. Uh, proven it can win at a mile four still. That the Belmont was not a fluke in any way, shape, or form. Down like that on a grade two. Kingsmere as well. Comedat's a grade three. Danelle is ungraded. Everybody else is in a really good place in terms of graded wins. Tons of grade ones now. Good ratings, good runs. Some of these two-year-olds will start to be over-raced. We're probably at the end of the season for all these that have run five and six. British Lady might have more. Kingsmere and Donnell might have. Well, Kingsmere might. I don't know about Donnell. I don't know if they make it or not, but... Uh, what a run, what a season we're having. Saffron Fang, absolutely amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Darren Anna, Marie Mysterio, the stars of the two-year-old class. Marej hits five grade one wins, moves up to 135. British Sweet, only three grade one wins, but up to a 138. So I'm very, very pleased with how we've run today. Still got a few more big ones, but the Arc de Triomphe has been run and won. Saffron Fang does it again. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate the support. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Join the Discord. Link in description if you already haven't. I'll see you there. Until such times as we see you again. Be safe, behave, and take care.